you. Uh, there's no more time for questions. We need to move to members' statement. It is 10:15, so I'll recognize the member for Humber River, Black Creek. Thank you, Speaker. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The cost of living in Ontario is unbearable for most individuals and families. The basic necessities of life in Ontario have become out of reach for so many. Energy bills, rent, gas, car insurance, and food prices have all skyrocketed, and this government hasn't reined it in. Families on fixed income suffer the most when their bottom line expenses go up. They're forced to make impossible choices between which bills to pay or to go without any money whatsoever when, uh, when ends just don't meet. Life is getting so hard that families now more than ever are relying on food banks to feed themselves. The figure will shock you. One in seven employed Canadians are currently accessing food banks. I'll say it again. These are employed individuals working hard to try and make ends meet in Ontario, but just can't do it. One in seven, imagine. And of that, over a third of all food bank users are children. Speaker, this is unacceptable. But what are Ontarians to do when even the food banks in their communities are being pushed out by the rising cost of rent and can no longer afford to operate in the neighbourhoods they serve? This is the case in my own community. A long-serving food bank, Society of the Living, has found itself priced out of their home, where they have operated for 24 years. Imagine that, an important source of relief for many families, priced out and looking for a new home. If local food banks are closing, what does this mean for those that need them the most? This government needs to act now because talk is cheap, but living in Ontario is not. Thank you. Next member's statement, the member for Barry Innisfil. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, thank you. I'd like to uh, commemorate uh, the Fern uh, Telfer in this legislature today. He is an outstanding uh, constituent who's always out and about. We just celebrated Remembrance Day where he is uh, often parade marshal wearing his red sash. And I know I can always go to you, Fern, and you can, uh, I can count on you to tell me uh, where I need to be and what I need to do. But so does our entire community. We're so lucky to have you at the Barry Legion 147 uh, and everything that you do with the Pocky, Poppy campaign. You help so many families. You your lives with so many people through the Poppy campaign, and you go above and beyond. Because of you and, of course, uh, our friend Bob, we have the uh of course, we have now the Peacekeepers Park, which you were fundamental uh, and instrumental to, and uh, that was turned from a, a grassy park that not many people visited to now the annual Peacekeepers Day Parade on August 9th every year because this park came to fruition. And most recently, I wanted to uh, ask uh, the legislature to give a round of applause for Fern because he is going to be receiving the Veterans Ombudsman Commendation Award. So congratulations, Fern. And this will uh, add to so many of your achievements, of, of course, uh, in addition to your uh, being the recipient of the Sovereign Medals for Volunteers and the Ministry of Veterans Affairs Commendation. Congratulations, Fern. Thank you for everything you're doing in our community, and I look forward to seeing you around uh, the Legion. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise to pay tribute today to the loss of a difference maker in Hamilton, Rebecca Morris, Mil Morris Miller. Less than four years ago, Becky, as we know her best, took the vision and her loved experiences and began a journey to bring light to the desperate need for programming. As the founder of operations director of Grenfell Ministries, Becky brought together her team to provide wraparound services for so many who have been pushed to the margins of our society. She devoted all she had to every project she touched, including the National Overdose Response Service, Connections in Corrections, just to name a few. Becky never stopped searching for ways to love people where they were at. Every time I saw her, she reminded me of those words. She was always talking down the road farther than any others could see. Becky could make you visualize the light before the path. If Becky could see it, you would too, largely in part to her charisma and activism. In speaking with Becky's fellow colleagues, they share such fond memories of her. She was their light, their spark, their flame of hope. She was one of their dearest friends and confidants. You see, Becky was always doing 
what she herself called revolutionary work. It really did change the lives of those living with addictions, mental health issues, and homelessness. She once told the media, we are all one decision away from a new life. Rebecca Morris Miller had faith in people when they didn't have faith in themselves. Becky, even though the world got a little darker when you left us in late October, I promise you, we will leave the light on through your work, your legacy, your children, your family, your friends, and your community. We will carry on in your grace and continue to advocate for all who continue to benefit from the work and your giving soul. May you rest knowing we will carry on your passion and love for all. For all. Rest in peace, my friend. Thank you. Next time your statement. Member for Orleans. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. As we come to the end of the Canadian football season, I want to congratulate and recognize the dominance of Orleans football clubs at all ages and levels this year, Madam Speaker. First, I'd like to congratulate the Tigers from St. Matthew Catholic High School. From what looked like would be a missed season due to the lack of equipment, the Tigers rallied and won the Tier 1 Ottawa Varsity Football Championship. Ranked inside the top 20 in the province, the Tigers are looking to roar their way into an offset title next week in Guelph. In community football, Madam Speaker, I'd like to recognize the utter dominance of the Cumberland Panthers Football Club. The Panthers led the way in creating a vibrant a division for U18 women's and girls uh, to experience tackle football this year, and they won the inaugural provincial title, defeating York. On the boys' side, the Panthers took home city titles at three of four age groups. Uh, the U12 Mosquitoes went undefeated, also winning the fall provincial title, defeating the Vaughan Rebels. And to top it all off, Mr. Speaker, former Cumberland Panther Curly Grittens Jr. put the cherry on top of a breakout season in the CFL, winning the Grey Cup last weekend with the Toronto Argonauts. I'd like to thank all the coaches, trainers, team managers, photographers, referees, moms and dads, and everyone else who volunteers to make Orleans football uh, a hotbed that it has become. Congratulations to all the boys and girls on their hard work and success, and I look forward to seeing you on the gridiron next spring. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Markham, Unionville. Thank you, Speaker. I'm excited to share some of the many wonderful events in Markham, Unionville. In October, I was delighted to celebrate CEFS Center's Harvest Festival and Victoria Square United Church 119th anniversary. I also celebrate the grand openings of Agora Prep Learning Center and Brown Academy. Thank you for investing in our students in Markham Unionville. On behalf of the Premier and MTCS, Mr. Speaker, I attend and was proud to announce the, our government's $74,000 support, $74, support towards the Danceport Grand Prix competition that took place in Markham Unionville. In November, I joined with my Hindu community and friends to celebrate Hindu Heritage Month. I was happy to share friendship and memories with the Toronto True Light Alumni Association as they celebrate their school's 150th anniversary in Hong Kong. Organized by Markham District Veterans Association, I joined the Remembrance Day service and paid tribute for veterans. I also laid a read at the Crosby Canotap. Thank you to many residents who came together to honor our heroes for their bravery and sacrifice. Mr. Speaker, safety has always been one of our government's top priorities. That's why I host a crime prevention roundtable for our Markham Unionville residents. Thanks to our law enforcement partners at YRP, we have learned so much on crime prevention and will continue to watch out our neighbours. Last Friday, about 40 residents from Markham Unionville took a Queen's Park tour. They admired the unique architecture and experience and explored Ontario's Parliament. I thank our government for this beautiful structure and the hard-working officials who ensure that Ontario is operating efficiently. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Stevens, the member for Davenport. Thank you, Speaker. Good morning. I've been out on the road these past few weeks, meeting face to face with Ontarians and hearing what matters to them. Last week brought me to Kingston and Sudbury, and just this past Sunday, I spent the day in Brampton, meeting with many, many community leaders. Brampton has been promised a lot 
by the Conservatives, but what are Bramptonians actually getting from this government? Take health care, for example. Brampton has seen promise after promise, but the fall economic statement included no mention of the expansion of Peel Memorial, not to mention the construction of a new hospital. In fact, the statement included no new money for health care, despite the staffing crisis and surge in respiratory illnesses. People in Brampton raise concerns with me about housing and growth, and they're wondering how replacing their elected regional chair with someone appointed by this government will make sure that growth is managed successfully, or how overriding official plans to the benefit of developers will make sure new developments are actually serviced by water and sewer or not built on floodplains. Speaker, Brampton needs a strong voice in this place to push this government to do more for people. New Democrats, new Democrats. Democrats will continue standing up for the people of Brampton. You can count on us. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. Member for Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Mr. Speaker, in, in 2018, when I was a new mayor in Loyalist Township, I had the opportunity to work with a gentleman by the name of John who's been a local developer in that area for more than 40 years. In my community, there are a large number of seniors, many of whom have been living in the same bungalows since the 60s or 70s and are reaching an age when they're looking to move to something less labor-intensive. Unfortunately, there are very few spaces for seniors to move into and still stay in their own communities. In fact, there have been no small format and purpose-built units developed in more than 40 years. And I'm told that this is a fairly common situation across the small towns in rural Ontario. At the time, the average price of one of these bungalows was selling for about 300,000 right, in early 2019. And so with that information, the developer designed a community of, of six, 56 units, right, or more precisely 14 fourplexes, Right? with each unit of over 1,000 square feet, single-story, modern HVAC, ensuite laundry, and modern appliances. The complex would be condominium, and so the external structures of those homes and the yard, the snow maintenance, would be taken care of. And they were selling for less than the average price of the homes they were moving out of. This has been a great success. The private developer continues to build a range of housing, including purpose-built rental and middle incomes, and he tells me that his greatest challenge with these projects has to do with the red tape, the bureaucratic delays, and the administrative uncertainty in both the cost and duration of these permitting processes. I can tell you that with the new initiatives proposed by this government, this will get better, and the people who build the homes, the people who actually make our homes, but will be further motivated to build more homes that we need in our community. Member statements. The member for Scarborough Rouge Park. Speaker, it is my honour to welcome Ms. Varada Lakshmi Shanmuganathan Amma to the Ontario Legislature today. At the age of 87, Varadama has earned the distinction of being the oldest person to graduate with a master's degree from York University and is one of the oldest women to earn a graduate degree in all of Canada. To add, Mr. Speaker, this is her second master's degree. She began her academic journey at the University of Madras in India, where she completed her undergraduate degree. She later also earned a diploma in, the, in education from University of Ceylon. She earned her first master's degree from the University of London, where she was in her 50s. She immigrated to Canada in 2004 and dedicated to make her dream come true when she learned that York University offers Canadian seniors over the age of 60 with waived tuition fees. Despite the pandemic and the challenges it posed to learning, she persevered and put the difficulties aside and powered through it all. Mr. Speaker, this woman is sitting in front of us today in the legislature is an inspiration to us all, to all the young people who are just beginning their academic, academic career. She reminds us that learning is a lifelong journey. I want to congratulate Vardamma for lifelong commitment to education. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Thank you. Member statements. The member for Halliburton, Kortha Lakes, Brock. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to acknowledge and thank the local Chambers of Commerce in my riding of Halliburton Court, the Lakes Brock. Chambers of Commerce staff provide various methods of assistance, guidance, and support to our local businesses and not-for-profit organizations. They help with things like networking assistance and advertising and promotion and community support. I have had the distinct pleasure of attending in-person award ceremonies recently for two of my local chambers, the Lindsay and District Chamber of Commerce, which represents approximately 330 businesses, and the Halliburton Highlands Chamber of Commerce, which represents approximately 270 businesses. On November the 10th, the Lindsay and District Chamber of Commerce held their Awards of Excellence event. This event celebrated many individuals and businesses from the area, recognizing, for example, the Employer of the Year Award and Tourism Excellence Award and the New Business of the Year Awards. The Halliburton Highland Chamber of Commerce held its Business and Community Achievements Awards ceremony this past Saturday, November the 19th. This event recognized community leaders with the Highlander of the Year, the Young Professional Award, and the Innovation and Creativity Awards, just to name a few. I would like to congratulate the nominees and winners, and in particular, the many young, innovative and creative entrepreneurs I met. And truly thank you to the Chamber staff for their continued contributions to help businesses be successful and continue to thrive during these uncertain times. Everyone in the community benefits from their support. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements? Member statements? Okay, I'm going to recognize the Minister of Seniors and Accessibility, who I understand has a point of order. Thank you, Minister Speaker. If you seek it, you will find unanimous consent to allow members to wear forget peanut pins in support of Alzheimer awareness. Thank you. Mr. Cho is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to allow members to wear forget-me-not pins in support of Alzheimer's awareness. Agreed? Agreed. 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 